let me show you how to set up your DBOT. First off, underneath the lid, you'll see a red on off switch. To the right, there's a button under a Wi-Fi symbol. And to the right below that, you'll see a QR code. Simply go into the app, select Add a Robot, then go on the list and select the robot that you have. Click on that. It'll bring you to your Wi-Fi information. And then, now in this, you cannot connect to a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It has to be 2.4 gigahertz. If you're on 5 gigahertz, you need to go into your settings and change it. If you try to click next with the 5 gigahertz, it should bring up a pop-up that directs you to your settings. But once you get to 2.4 gigahertz, click on next. Then you open the lid and you switch on your robot. And click on next. And you'll be waiting for a sound. And once you've heard that sound, click next. And then you go to your settings. And in your Wi-Fi settings, there'll be an Ecovax. I'm sorry, there'll be an Ecovax Wi-Fi. Select that, and then go back to. Okay. It takes a little bit to get to this point. Once you get there, your connection is complete. Click done and you should see your DBOT listed. Hope this helps. Thank you. Okay, let's go through your app. First off, down the bottom left, you have clean preferences. You can use this to tell it whether to go through the room once or twice. You're back in power level. And your water flow level. Let's switch this is on. It will. You can go in here to edit the bottom left. You can specify that information for each room individually. Next, you have clean preferences. This tells the vacuum what order you want the rooms to be vacuumed or mopped in. Up here at the menu, you have advanced mode. That's turned off by default. You want to make sure that's on. It saves your map. And also it gives you all your little extra features. Auto boost suction. All that is when it detects carpet, it turns up the suction to high. Auto empty. If you have an auto bin, um, when it docks, it will automatically empty the bin on your vacuum. Scheduling, there's two different types of scheduling. There's auto cleaning and area cleaning. Uh, auto, it does, it cleans everything it has access to. Area cleaning, you actually can specify what rooms you want cleaned for that schedule. And then a true 3D obstacle avoidance that does not have to stay on all the time. You can turn it off if preferred. Uh, continuous cleaning. Basically what that does, if it runs low on battery, it goes back to the charging dock. It charges up to what it needs to finish the job and then will continue on. Uh, do not disturb. Basically, just like it sounds, you can say if, so it won't finish charging in the middle of the night and go off. It'll wait for the next morning to go off. Um, clean cloth reminder. If you're doing mopping, you can set this to remind you to clean the cloth after a certain amount of time. Um, reset current map. You want to be careful with that. That actually deletes your map. We have to map all over. Additional settings you have your clean log, which tells you how far and how long you cleaned. And 
was very nice because it'll show you where the vacuum actually covered. Accessory usage. The accessories, it kind of keeps track on how long they've been used and it'll give you a recommendation when it's time to change them. Voice report. You can change your language. You can also change the volume. Rename your D-Bot, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, help. This gives you some Q&As, and in some countries you'll have live chat and send messages down the bottom to contact support. And also I have your instruction manual in digital format. And about D-Bot, that will give you your firmware version. You can change whether you want meters or feet and your serial number and network information. This up here at the top right, basically that just, it's a locator. It will have the robot tell you, I am here, so you can find it if it's not showing up on your map. And something's a little more obscure. Down here at the bottom left, if you click on that, it looks like two pieces of paper and a pencil. It'll bring you to multi-floor map. I highly recommend you turn that on. It's also off by default. This gives you the capability to come in here and save your map. When it first finishes mapping, there'll be a, a icon there that looks like a disc. You press that to save your map. Now this is the most obscure. If you click on that map, it'll bring you to this screen, which gives you all these options, virtual boundaries, edit areas, and label areas, and also delete your map and also has this nice little feature where it shows your Wi-Fi coverage on your home. Going back to the main screen, up the top right you have where this little speech box at the top right that gives you robot messages. That basically is all the messages your robot has sent you and what robot sent it if you have more than one. Notifications, this is where you get your replies from your support. You also get it through email. Over here to the left, okay, you got share robot. You can share your robot with between different devices. Basically, you can do the same thing by using the same login on each device. Some vacuums, the ones with AI, will not allow you to share it, so using the same login is your only option. Settings is basically just your region, language, and stuff like that. Now we're ready to start mapping. First off, a few points I want to make. Be sure advanced mode, continuous cleaning, and multi-floor maps are turned on. They're turned off by default, so we want to make sure they're on. And also, I highly recommend, especially the first time in mapping, you map in quiet mode. However, it's no longer called quiet mode, it's just the fan with the line through it. Right here. Make sure your charging dock is in a good location per the instructions. Make sure all the doors stay open to, until completed and pick up anything you think might interfere with the vacuum. With this vacuum, you shouldn't have much of an issue since it does have object avoidance. But just look around and see if anything you think might cause a problem. If you're planning on mopping, do not put the charging dock on the carpet. By design, the mop will not travel on the carpet. Try not to interfere with the vacuum while it's mapping. This can screw things up. The mapping will be completed when the vacuum docks on the charger by itself. Just click on here. And sit back and wait. I've gone through this before, but I'll try to go through it with a little more detail. Um, after you mapped, at the bottom left here, you'll have the two paper and pencil. Um, click on that. This will bring you to multi-floor mapping. At this point, over to the right of map, uh, you'll have a little disk icon. You click on that to save your map. Um, then at that point, up above, it'll show you save maps. At this point, you click on that map. This will bring you to the next menu. On this menu, you have virtual boundaries, edit area, label areas, and delete, and Wi-Fi. Um, virtual boundaries, 
very basic. You have square virtual boundaries where you can set up your boundaries for your vacuum. Press check to confirm or X to delete. You also have lined, works the same way. And you have no mop zones, which this just affects for the mop. Then going over to edit areas. Uh, basically here you can merge and divide areas. Merge areas, you select the two areas that you want to merge. Click the, at the very bottom, you have this little merge icon. Click that, and it'll make it into one room. Divide areas, you select the one room you want to divide. Down here at the very bottom, it gives you this little icon. Click on that. That will give you this line. At that point, you set the line where you want to divide the room then select on the check mark. And that will divide the room. Label area is pretty straightforward. You click the room you want to label. It gives you this limited list, but, uh, and also it doesn't label it with the name and actually not labels it with just the icon. So you pick the label you want to use. As you can see, it just puts the living room icon there. And then you have delete the delete your map. You want to be careful with that. And this is kind of neat right here. This shows your Wi-Fi coverage. If you have a problem with your vacuum not working in a certain area, you can check here to make sure you have Wi-Fi coverage in that area. Now I want to go over some improvements they've made since the 950 model. Uh, down here at the bottom left, you have cleaning purposes. Before on the 950 model, you had quiet mode, standard mode, max mode, max plus mode. And you set it, and it did was like that for every room. Now you have cleaning purposes. You have the same option with quiet mode, standard mode, except now they're icons instead of wording. But And then you have the 1 and 2, just like you did on the 950 and then the water level. But you have an option here, if you click on clean preferences, that allows you to make that adjustment for each room individually. Each room can have its own speed, the number of times you go over it, its own water level. So you don't have to, it gives you a lot more flexibility. Also, you have clean sequence. That allows you to set what direction you want your vacuum to go during a cleaning cycle. If it's a scheduled cleaning cycle, auto cleaning cycle, whatever. That's just a couple of improvements they made since the 950, which greatly enhances your cleaning options. I'm going to go a little more into scheduling. And scheduling, if you have two maps, of course, the, the one the vacuum is recognized as your active map is the only one the schedule is going to work for. You have two different types of schedules. You have auto cleaning or area cleaning. Auto cleaning is just going to clean everything it has access to. Area cleaning, you're actually able, able to select which rooms you want to vacuum. You set your time, what days, how often you want it, and that's pretty much it. Okay, let's go over multi-floor mapping. First, move the docking station, also known as a charging station, to the second floor to create the second floor map. Once mapping is complete, save that map using the disk icon just like you did on the first map. At that point, after you move the vacuum from one floor to the other, the vacuum should recognize the location and give you the proper floor plan. When moving the vacuum upstairs, it is recommended you move the docking station 
with it, which can be inconvenient if all you have is an auto empty station. You have two other choices to consider. You can purchase another docking station to leave on the second floor, which is recommended, or you can actually move it without the docking station. Uh, if you choose to take this route, I recommend you place the vacuum at the same location each time so you know it will be able to locate itself. Also, without a docking station, when the vacuum job is complete, the vacuum will look around for the docking station for 10 minutes before it airs out saying it cannot find the dock. That's your choice. Hopefully this will help you get through multi-floor mapping.